Being the 21st safest country in the world, it might not seem that serious issues would roam around it. But the Netherlands, however, is hardly an ideal nation. This is because drug cartels exist there. Nabil B., a 30-year-old male, raised his voice regarding them, possibly altering the course of his life. Nabil was one of the five children of Moroccan immigrants who moved to Utrecht, a medieval city in the center of the Netherlands, in the 1970s. Nabil encountered difficulties academically and was different from his siblings who went on to become successful entrepreneurs and businessmen. He completed a degree in metallurgy before engaging in minor offenses like the sale of weed. He had been ambitious despite his youth. Nabil had great stories and loved money, according to the police testimony of his best friend from that period. A case handed over to the Netherlands in December 2021 from the Dutch. Marengo trial put the so-called Mokro Mafia into the spotlight. The Dutch port of Rotterdam served as a nexus for the suspected cocaine cartel head, Ridouan Tidy. The liberal nation has alarmed the powerful cartel in Dubai connected to Tidy, which fears it could transform it into a narco state. Tidy was accused of using covert messaging to communicate with his outside minions in order to manage his killing machine while confined in a very guarded institution. The Marengo trial named after a legal code name for the operation in which Taggy and 16 other individuals were charged, in accordance with witnesses, a first for the Netherlands. The violence that followed the Marengo verdict has simply caused a huge shock, according to Jan Mias, a Dutch journalist who specializes in criminal law, who spoke to AFP. A recent hearing, in his words, was the ultimate test of the Dutch judicial system of the rule of law. Nabil met Ridwan Taiti at a local shisha lounge one night in 2006. Nabil was 10 years younger than Taggy at the time. Taggy was 29, and the two shared something in common when it came to chess and family connections to Chefkawan, a 15th century Moroccan city. It is said that the city had blue buildings that provided divine protection. Taggy was living between Dubai and Morocco at the time, smuggling hash across the state of Gibraltar and into the coffee shops of Amsterdam and Utrecht to make a fortune. Taggy was nicknamed Klein or Tiny, and over the next few years, and would become a rising star in the global cocaine trade. He accommodated many South American cartels who decided to shift their trafficking operations from the US to Europe and used Northwestern Africa as a jumping off point around 2008. He built out his empire by shipping a fleet of high-powered speedboats to Morocco to scale up deliveries and hired fishermen to receive shipments of cocaine. Taiki is currently believed to be worth more than 1 billion euros and to share control over up to one-third of all cocaine trafficking in Europe. Nabil claimed that Taggy gave him small jobs in the Netherlands immediately after they met. For the following 10 years, he served as a lookout for Taggy's group, setting up getaway cars and gathering details about rival gang members to be given to the heads or professional killers. Nabil had some knowledge of the friendship between him and Taggy's right-hand man said Razuki. The media had dubbed them the Mokro Mafia Gang due to the group's ethnic origin. Taihi denies ever having met Nabil, who later testified to the prosecutors that he witnessed at least 13 murders that he helped plan while working for Taihi. Taihi dispatched Nabil to follow an associate who was thought to be giving out information to a rival cartel. He used colorful language to characterize his adversaries and told a colleague that dirty whore child must be taken out. Two men in a black Audi were tasked with doing what they were told to do on 12 January 2017 and drove to a split-level residence in the lush Overvec district of Utrecht. They killed the subjects in an instant with multiple gunshots aimed at the man on the porch. After that, they abandoned the weapons and the car a kilometer away from the murder scene in which Nabil provided. Nabil woke up to 10 missed calls in the morning. And that's when it clicked for him that everything was about to go downhill. The assassins accidentally shot the wrong person. Hakim Chengechi, a 31-year-old scion from a family with apparent gangland ties. The man happened to be in the same building as the intended victim. Nabil had known Chengechi since they were children, and so it was personal to him. Soon after discovering Nabil's connection to their son's murder, the Chengechis contacted him to set up a meeting. Nabil believed Taggy gave him the go-ahead to attribute the murder to a rival group. Nabil accomplished this, although he was troubled by his guilt, as he would later admit to police. He declared, I couldn't live with that family going through hell 
While I was telling a falsehood, he had known Cheng Gachi since childhood and had been to his wedding. He understood that the problem wouldn't just disappear. He believed the family was aware of the truth, and he lacked faith in Taggy to stand up for him if they chose to take action. Nabil realized that someone was going to try to kill him in some way. Nabil had no other choice but to inform a member of Cheng Gachi's family. On January 14, 2017, that Taggy had ordered the murder. He called the police station in the heart of Amsterdam hours later, and offered offered to serve as a witness. It was a choice that would precipitate a string of shocking incidents, including at least 20 arrests, the capture of one of Europe's biggest drug lords, three homicides, including the assassination of one of the country's most well-known public figures, frequently chaotic trial proceedings, held in conditions of security never before seen, five years in counting. The social impact of this incident on Dutch society has been extremely significant. After witnessing all this mayhem, a nation that has long taken pride in its tolerance of drugs is beginning to reconsider that policy. Three people connected to Nabil B, a key witness for the prosecution in the trial, have already been killed in separate incidents that shook the Netherlands. In 2018, he saw the murder of his brother. 2019 saw the shooting death of his lawyer Dirk Weersom and Peter R. In 2021, De Vries passed away. De Vries had claimed that Taggy, who was apprehended in Dubai in 2019, had him on his death list. Peter De Vries was shot and killed in broad daylight in central Amsterdam as he left a television studio. In a first for the Netherlands, the army is manning the bunker in Amsterdam. Taggy is on trial. This means judges and prosecutors would ride in armored cars to proceedings. Mias claimed that plans for employing extreme violence to free Taggy from prison had been discovered. One of Taggy's attorneys and his cousin are charged with facilitating his contact with the outside world. According to Wim de Bruin, a spokesman for the National Prosecutor's Office, organized crime is shaking and exerting pressure on the democratic rule of law. The threat has reached Dutch society's highest echelons. King Willem Alexander's daughter, Crown Princess Amelia, was recently compelled to abandon her intentions to live in dorms due to security concerns. Messages from organized crime groups named both the 19-year-old monarch and Prime Minister Mark Rutte, sparking concerns about plans to kidnap or attack them, according to Dutch media. Although the Netherlands neighbors frequently point the finger at its liberal soft drug legislation, Maureen Schriever, co-author of the best-selling book Macro Mafia, claimed that that was not the reason. We want to import as much as we can into the ports to transfer it again, which makes the Netherlands the ideal location logistically, Schriever said to AFP. The Super Cartel which is said to have supplied a third of the cocaine in Europe, was recently dismantled in Dubai, which suggests the drug lords may be leaving the Netherlands. According to reports, the heads of Irish and Italian drug gangs had established an alliance with a taggy-affiliated Dutch, Big Fish, who was apprehended in the Gulf Emirate. The fluid and creative networks now cooperate, according to Europol spokesperson Jan Op Jen Orth, and their kingpins are sitting outside of the EU's jurisdiction. It's not one group against the other anymore, which makes it extremely dangerous, he said to AFP. Nabil started the process to become a crown witness as soon as he surrendered to police that January morning in 2017. This meant that he could obtain a lighter sentence and the means to begin a new life in witness protection in exchange for disclosing what he knew about Taggy's organization in court. When he entered the station, Nabil started talking right away, even though the legal agreement wasn't made until over a year later. That's a wrap on the story of Nabil B, who chose to be a crown witness. Leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Turn the notification bell on for more videos like this too. Thank you for watching.